A spacecraft is departing from Earth with another group of settlers headed for Mars. One of the passengers convinces her daughter to wave goodbye to the planet as they will be apart for a very long time. The well-established route consists of two stages. The shuttle docks with the Aniara, a huge spaceship that has everything for comfortable living. And after three weeks it delivers the passengers to the colonized planet. A young woman named Emily Grant on the ship serves as a mimorobe, a guide to the world of Mima, the system that allows one to delve into their memories and vision so that the brain does not get bored with the repetitive space scenery. Emily herself loves to remember her walks in the forest and the visions even allow her to feel her bare feet stepping on the moss. A new neighbor is added to Emily's room, an adult female astronomer. From the huge monitors, the astronomer tells the passengers about the delights of Eniara and that the ship has everything to keep from getting bored. Shopping centers, restaurants, and even nightclubs. If desired during the journey, one can work in the water purification department or the seaweed factory, which is necessary for oxygen production. The company pays points which serve as currency for this work. Emily gathers another group for Mima sessions. In the visualization room there is silence as the Mimorope lays people down on the floor, face down on a special pillow, and launches the system. The glowing screen shimmers with different colors, not showing any pictures. But if the Mimorope needs to know the visions of a specific visitor, she uses a special remote control. Suddenly, an emergency situation occurs on the ship, and the whole group slides to the corner of the room. The passengers exit their cabins in panic to find out what happened. They gather in a large hall where the captain is supposed to make a live broadcast. After gathering his strength, the man makes an announcement. There has been a system failure on the Aniara, and the ship has lost all fuel and drifted off course. The crew believes that it's not a big deal and that by using the gravity of celestial bodies, they will be able to return to Earth. However, the journey will now take a little over two years instead of the promised three weeks. The outraged passengers disagree with this plan, worrying about their plans without even realizing what lies ahead. Austerity measures are introduced on the ship, but the crew realizes that the supplies will not be enough in any case. At best, there is only enough food for a couple of months. One of the crew members suggests growing algae more actively, which will help them survive. The first three weeks of confinement in space pass. The people still don't lose their optimism, but they're already starting to get bored. The Mima becomes the most popular hole as everyone wants to see more than just the infinite universe outside the window. And Emily can't handle it, so she asks the captain for help. In addition, the girl is going through a personal drama, hoping to resume her relationship with one of the crew members, Isagel. Emily asks a neighbor how long it would take to reach the nearest celestial body so that the ship can turn around. The woman initially avoids answering, but then admits that in her opinion all of this is hopeless. There are no points that could help them, the crew just doesn't know how to tell the passengers about it. After hearing this, the Mimorope has a panic attack and runs to her hole to immerse herself in memories of Earth, and also to drink in secret so that the commander would know. The journey has been going on for three years already. The people have settled into life on the ship, having come to terms with the length of the flight. Emily goes to a party where she meets Daisy and they decide to alleviate their loneliness together. When the couple retreats to a corridor, Isagel walks by and gives Daisy a cold glance, making it impossible for her to relax. There aren't enough people on the ship to work with the algae and water purification systems. Even young passengers are now being recruited, but the systems can't keep up and all the drinks have an unpleasant sulfide smell. Strange things also start happening in the ship's hull, as the system malfunctions and Mima using human language begs to stop as it can no longer handle passing through people's memories. One of the people lying on the floor starts thrashing around in hysteria, and when Emily connects her remote to him she sees very unpleasant images in his head. The Mimorope turns to the ship's captain, asking him to let the system rest, but he believes that this is the passenger's only outlet and denies her request. Furthermore, he reprimands the girl for driving customers out of the session. During the next session, Mima repeats its words, and at some point, the laser screen begins to crumble, finally stopping the system's operation. 
the customers are dissatisfied and blame the Mima robe entirely. The people gather at the door to the hall to hold a memorial for Mima, and the management accuses Emily of what happened. They catch the girl and punish her severely, after which they imprison her along with Isagel, who tried to defend her friend before the management. On the ship, a series of nervous breakdowns with fatal consequences begins, and the commander has no choice but to release everyone who is under guard to take up workstations. Dead bodies are sent into open space, as the ship is not equipped to store them. Isagel is sent to work in the logistics department, and Emily returns to teaching, this time with the task of educating the children on board, focusing on space sciences that could help them with their return. During their time in confinement, the Mimarope and Isagel developed a relationship, so they move in together once they're free. Communities and groups emerge on the ship, each praying in their own way for our return and rescue. At one of the gatherings of a cult-like group, they invite the girls, as Emily was associated with Mima. In a dark room, the friends first become witnesses and then participants in love games, after which Isagel becomes pregnant. The girl falls into depression, fearing that her indulgence will bring another hostage into the situation, but Emily supports her with all her might. She even plans to make a light screen that would replace the dark picture outside the window with earthly landscapes, but the captain forbids wasting resources on such foolishness. The couple has a healthy boy who grows very quickly, but is a gal can shake the feeling that she shouldn't have done it. While bathing with her son in the pool, she almost commits a terrible act, but fortunately she's distracted by a message from the captain, who urgently invites his former assistant to a meeting. It becomes revealed that after six years of travel, a flying machine has finally been detected, and a meeting with it will take place in about a year. Isagel measures the approximate size of the object and understands that it is unlikely to be a rescue ship, but everyone hopes that they will be able to obtain fuel from it to return to their route. Emily comes to the team to be with her girlfriend at such an important moment. The captain joyfully announces the discovery to the passengers, hoping to boost their morale, which he manages to do. To celebrate the occasion, a party is held on the ship, complete with drinks and leftover delicious food. As usual, the commander tries to present himself in the best light by claiming credit for the team's achievements. Throughout the year, everyone diligently trains to release probes and dock, and by the appointed time, everyone is fully prepared for the operation. The docking operation goes perfectly, and the giant space probe is placed in the ship's cargo hold for examination, to determine if it contains any fuel and how radioactive it has become during its time in space. The son of Emily and Isagel is growing up, and the couple now has hope that he will see Earth. Due to a lack of peers, the boy is not developing well and hardly speaks. It is not possible to determine the chemical composition of the object because the study methods on the ship are outdated, but work is constantly being done. The captain declares that he does not consider it a mistake to give people hope, as it has brought stability to many. The roommate of Emily gets drunk at the bar and becomes too candid, causing panic to break out on the ship again. The captain takes notice of this and gets rid of the troublemaker at the first opportunity, even sending her body into open space but allowing for a memorial service for Emily. After taking an exhilarating pill, Emily goes to the bar where she meets Daisy and his friends again. The group has a fun time, but another accident occurs on the ship. An unknown object explodes and damages the equipment. Those who were working on the probe in the cargo hold at the time are lost forever. Upon inspection of the damage, the captain orders them to be disposed of while saving any useful clothing. Meanwhile, the Mimarobe returns home and asks Isagel for forgiveness, and it seems that everything is returning to a peaceful state. However, during the conversation, Emily realizes that her friend has developed mental disorders. After putting her son to bed, Emily shares her achievements at work with Isagel. The two women have a nice chat, and Emily is not worried about anything. Wishing her friend a good night, Emily leaves to finally connect the light screen she has long dreamed of creating. Everything works perfectly, and the remaining passengers on the ship marvel at the earthly landscapes with waterfalls and forests outside the window. As she listens to the words of gratitude, Emily plans to create new pictures. Emily runs to her cabin to hear the opinion of your family. She opens the door with the key, but it doesn't budge. Emily tries to fix the lock several times, but then realizes that something is blocking it from the inside. With effort, she finds a belt from a robe on the door handle, and Isagel is nearby. 
Coming to his senses a few seconds later, Emily runs to her son's room, but there she is met with a terrible sight. It's the tenth year of the journey. The captain gathers the few remaining passengers in the main hall and presents Emily with an award for creating the light screen. As she receives the medal from the commander, the young woman notices traces of a nervous breakdown on his wrist. Giving a speech, the captain tries to appear heroic in this situation and suggests that they should be proud that they have gone farther than anyone has gone before. On the 24th year of the journey, only a few people remain alive. Old and wrinkled Emily leads a meeting of the survivors, where they pray for strength to be sent to them. The ship has long been powerless and is floating in space like a piece of space junk. And, almost six million years later, the spacecraft Aniara approaches an unknown planet in the constellation of Lyra. 